Hi, my name is Gitet and I'm going to show you today how to use visibility embeddings to improve metaphor detection. Best way to understand metaphors is by looking at some examples. Um, brown rice is literal, brown threat is metaphorical. In the literal case, brown has its original physical meaning as the color brown. And in brown threat, uh, it's no longer true. And it's actually quite typical to see a difference in the concreteness of words in metaphorical expression. Um, brown is a very concrete word and threat is a very abstract word. Uh, formally, there are two common tasks when we talk about metaphor detection. One is to classify a whole sentence as metaphorical or literal in relation to some target word or a verb. And the second one is sequence labeling in which each token in the sentence is classified as either metaphorical or literal. Uh, also more formally, and also like we just saw, metaphor is a way to move knowledge from a concrete domain to an abstract one. Um, in dark mood, for example, we use the concrete domain of brightness to describe emotions, which are very abstract. Uh, what is concreteness? A word is uh, defined as concrete if it can be directly perceived through one of the five senses. In the same case, we have uh, also abstract words that cannot be perceived directly. Um, in reality, the words that are annotated by humans as concrete are almost always also visualizable, uh, means that they have a denotation in a region of an image or a specific configuration between entities in an image. And this is where we make the connection between vision language datasets and metaphor detection. Um, these datasets match uh, text and images. It can be done in several different ways. And by definition, uh, the text is highly visualizable. Therefore, it is enough and uh, also quite powerful to use only the textual part of these datasets, what we call the visual uh, co uh, corpora. And this is the visual corpus for the MSCOCO. And this is the, uh, for example, the visual corpus for the visual ge uh, genome or the image descriptions. And again, it's um, very intuitive. We can see here that uh, descri image descriptions from the uh, visual genome are uh, very literal with many uh, concrete words. And when we look at the same verb with its uh, metaphorical meaning uh, from the MOH uh, dataset, we can see that in the uh, sentence we have many abstract words that we don't usually find in visual corpora. Um, we previously uh, empirically showed that um, uh, visual corpora are more concrete in this paper. We also defined non-visual corpora uh, by taking uh, some balanced uh, corpus, like the barn corpus, and subtracting from it uh, some visual corpus, and show that what's left, the non-visual corpora, is highly abstract. And we use these two facts in order to build visibility embeddings and to solve the uh, sequence tagging um, task. And we start uh, uh, with the simple architecture suggested by Gao and colleagues. Uh, we have here some um, input embedding for each token, a BioLSTM and a fit forward layer and one output per token. Uh, now for the um, construction of the visibility embeddings. Uh, each word is assigned one of three possible vectors to represent that the word is either abstract, concrete, or neutral. Um, each vector is of length L with values around some mean M and can be minus one, zero, or one uh, based on the concreteness. And uh, which uh, we find M by using uh, a visual corpus as a reference. We use the predefined BVC, big visual corpus, that maximizes the metric that we use to uh, measure the concreteness level of a corpus uh, means that the BVC is highly concrete. And for each word, if the word is stop word, it, could, it would get um, zero. If the word is in brown minus BVC, which is a, s a smaller uh, corpus, uh, highly abstract, it would get minus one. If it's in the BVC one, otherwise zero. And then we uh, take these uh, visibility embeddings and concatenate them to um, embeddings uh, gained using uh, a pre-trained BERT. 
and we show we show results on two uh, hand annotated uh, commonly used data sets. Uh, the results are quite good, both for the uh, verb testing and um, and on all tokens, especially when um, compared with uh, methods that use the same architecture but with different embeddings. And uh, since these data sets are hand annotated, uh, they are um, uh, relatively small, and therefore their uh, F scores uh, have many fluctuations, even with a slight change of parameters in the model. Uh, therefore, we uh, present here a parameterized F score uh, as a function of the learning rate, for example. So we can see that using BERT with visib visibility in embeddings, and in this case also GLOVE, is consistently better than using just BERT or BERT with uh, some randomized uh, vector with the same length and um, um, and uh, values, uh, range values of the visibility embeddings. And not shown here is also BERT with GLOVE, it, which give uh, more or less the same results as just using BERT. And also uh, the results on the MOHX um, uh, dataset, which are uh, good. We present here uh, both the uh, results on pre-chosen splits and also uh, uh, averaged over many splits because this uh, dataset is so small. Uh, uh, we uh, found that uh, um, doing this averaging is a better practice and to maintain consistency with um, previous papers, we present uh, uh, both results and they are both um, very good. Okay, hope you enjoy uh, this very short talk and thank you.